So judging by some of the posts that I've seen lately, uh, a lot of guys are asking what's the purpose of sealer, or which sealer, or 1K sealer, 2K sealer. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider when you're going to decide if you're going to use sealer or what sealer you're going to use. So in order to understand all this, first things first, we got to kind of understand the different types of adhesion. So there's physical adhesion and chemical adhesion. And, and physical adhesion is going to be your scratch. It's, it's going to get in that scratch and, and bite in and grip. Uh, the chemical adhesion process is more in depth. You get into isocyanates and, and cross-linking and, and products that work together, products that don't work together. So we're going to talk a little bit about that first. So isocyanates are basically the backbone of the cross-linking process. Uh, anything most products that you're going to use that are a 2K product, they have an activator uh, that's going to have isocyanates in it. And what the isocyanates do is, is allow a chemical reaction for crossing. And when you have chemical adhesion, it is much better than having relying only on physical adhesion. So if I'm using a sealer, here I've got my sealer down first coat, my base coat, and then clear on top of that. When you use sealer, this is an activated product. There's isocyanates in that product. This is the first step of, of your foundation. Uh, so then you use base coat over your sealer. Your sealer, you're gonna use a value shade, most likely one through five or one through seven, whatever your system is. Uh, but when you, as you're painting, you're stacking these products on top of each other, your base coat is probably not activated. It may be, you can use activator, but we'll get into that a little bit in a minute. When you use the isocyanates, the activator in the sealer, then you put base coat on top of that. So sealer is gonna have, most sealer is gonna have a lift window, they call it. It might be an hour, it might be three hours. You gotta look at the TDS sheets. But the sealer that I use is DAS sealer. It's a Deltron sealer. Um, I think the lift window on that is roughly an hour. But if you if you seal something and you don't you don't put base coat on it before before your recoat window is up, where it will accept new solvents without lifting. Uh, if you if you exceed the recoat window, you get into the lift window, and that's where you can have problems. Your your isocyanates are at a point where they've pretty well kicked, and they're not really willing to accept another another layer of solvent, and and that solvent tries to drive into that sealer to do its crosslinking, and it 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 is rejected, it, and and that's why you get that wrinkling up. Uh, that's pretty common with 1K versus 2K, which we'll get into a little more too. Uh, a lot of times if you put a 2K product over a 1K product, it's going to wrinkle or lift. But when I put my sealer on, that's got the isocyanates in it, it's an activated product. Base coat is probably not, it can be, but most likely not. And then my clear is also activated clear, it's a 2K clear when I have isocyanates in here and isocyanates in here, these, these as, as you're spraying, once you're done, the isocyanates from the sealer and the isocyanates from the clear are gonna, they're gonna cross-link and they're, they're gonna chemically cross-link your whole, your whole paint system. This is all gonna be, I'll say, essentially chemically glued together. So when you use, when you don't use sealer, you're probably not activating your base coat either. This is sanded primer. This is dry, it's cured, it's sanded. You're gonna go straight to base over sanded primer. So there's no isocyanates down here to drive up to your clear. And it, therefore there's no crossing. This is gonna make your, your whole system weaker. And it, it will work for you. Don't get me wrong, that's not, I'm not saying this is wrong or that's right. 
but these are, in my experience, what is best. I, I like to use sealer. It's uh, it's a good it's a good product to use. There's many reasons to use it. Certain scenarios, there's reasons not to use it. Another important thing to understand about isocyanates is temperature, panel temperature, not air temperature. A lot of guys are. If you're using a 70 degree activator, you think the air temperature should be 70 degrees. That's not that's not how that works. Your your panel temp, your metal temp should be within whichever product you're using, which in within that temperature range. Isocyanates lock at 58 degrees Fahrenheit. If your panel temp is below 58 degrees, your isocyanates will not crosslink. They they basically die and and you can once that happens, once those isos are dead, you can bake it all you want. It's not gonna bring it back to life. Your paint will dry and it may or may not look good, but you might have some hazing and some like dieback looking type of problems, but you won't have any cross-linking. Your isos will die at 58 degrees. So that being said, a lot of guys, uh, when it's colder outside, you know, you get your shot during the day, shut the heat off at night, you get your panel, even though that product is dry, it's still curing. Those isos are probably still kind of doing their thing a little bit. You you need to keep the panel temp above 58. The warmer, the better, most often. Another thing to think about with isocyanates is keeping the shelf life of the isocyanates, your activators, they're sealed for a reason. When you open it up, you open the cap, you gotta you gotta unseal the cap. And the reason that is is that that uh, that can, the airspace in there is filled with nitrogen, probably nitrogen, other they may use other gases, but the whole point is to lock out the oxygen. So once you open that activator, technically it has a shelf life of about two weeks. Once that, once that isocyanate is introduced to oxygen in the air, it is technically has a shelf life of two weeks. Now they probably won't tell you that because they don't want you to think you got to throw your stuff away after two weeks. Are you going to use it? Yes, you're going to use it. It's expensive. You're not going to throw it in the garbage, and that's fine. I've never had an issue uh, with with using something that's been open longer than two weeks or even months, but to a certain extent. I mean, you wouldn't want to use something that's years old, I would say, but within reason, it, in my opinion, it stays good. But they say two weeks, the ice will start to die in that product. So, 1K products versus 2K products. 2Ks have isocyanates in them, 1Ks do not. So, you use a 1K, say you use a, I don't know, a, a 1K product of some sort, that basically means that that product's not activated. It's a one part, one part product. You spray it straight out of the can. Uh, adhesion promoter, things like that, or a 1K. There's some 1K sealers. A 1K is referred to as a thermoplast product, which means that it's going to, if you spray something else at it without scuffing it, it is probably going to allow, allow that new solvent to, to bite back in. So base coat, when you don't activate it, is a thermoplast product. It is willing to accept solvents. A lot of the base coats say, don't recoat after 24 hours, even if you don't activate it, uh, because it's that clear, that, that base coat will accept clear being put on it days, even weeks later. A thermoplast product, if you had a super clean environment, you could leave it just sit for months even. You could you could come back in, tack it off, and spray clear at it. That clear, even though the isocyanates in your in your sealer may be dead and, and, and have done their thing, and now those isos are gone, you won't get that proper cross-linking, but uh, it would be kind of the same as using uh, base go right over primer without using sealer. Is, is chemically it would be about the same but when you use that base coat not activated you can come back really at any time and clear it without scuffing it now if you activate that base coat it's a 2k product this is a thermal set product 
so you have a recoil window now. And I found this out the hard way. I uh, we were spraying a trico candy, and uh, we had gotten four coats of gold on the car, and in between my second and third coat of candy, I we took a little break, ate some dinner, came back in. These these products were activated. I was using Deltron with the X57 base coat activator. And in doing that, I created I created a lift window. So my recoil window was about an hour in that case. So by activating it, I created a lift window that I didn't know about at the time. And uh, what that means is now that those ISOs have locked in that base coat, it's after an hour up to four to six hours, whatever the number is, it may reject new solvents. Those isos have locked and they're not willing to accept new solvent. When that happens, you get the lifting. So in between the second and third coat, I went, took a break, I put the third coat of candy on and lo and behold, it wrinkled all over the place. We had to, we had to sand the whole car down and start over and it was a nightmare lesson learned. So really the only time that I will activate base coat is if you're doing a tri coat. Uh, that's mostly the purpose of activating base coat because if you're doing a, a normal color, uh, uh, just a base clear color, your sealer has your isos in it and your base is not going to have those isos in it but your clear will and those isos, once you clear it, the isos from the sealer and the isos from the clear are, are binding through that base coat and it's, it's binding the whole system together. Now if you get to a point like with a tri coat, you've got multiple, multiple coats going on, that base coat is going to be too thick for those two solvents to meet each other. So that's why you use the activator in base coat on a tri coat to get the proper cross link. You're putting the isos in the base coat so that all those isos can, can lock and make a good foundation.